Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to actually practice using compression and when you should be using it. Compression is one of the absolutely essential tools in mixing to help things stand out. But of course, if it's applied similarly to everything, nothing will stand out and you'll have an over-compressed mix that will lack life and dynamics. So first of all, ask yourself why you're compressing something before you do it. It should be because you want to give something more power and punch, or to control the signal and make it more consistent, or to give something a bit more energy. If you're not doing it for any of those, maybe you don't need to compress it in the first place. I'm going to be demonstrating this on a kick drum that I want to add a lot of punch and energy to. The key part of practicing and improving your use of compression is by making sure you can actually hear it. We're going to set some extreme compression settings on this kick to really hear what the compressor is doing. This will make adjusting the settings much easier as you'll really hear what each parameter is changing. I'll be aiming for around minus 15 dB of reduction so we can really hear it. I'm going to set the knee to a hard knee, have an instant attack, quite a long release at about 400 milliseconds or so, and have an 8 to 1 ratio. Then I'm going to drop the threshold so we're getting our desired amount of reduction. So I'll hit play and start to drop the threshold. Okay, so that's plenty. Let's just have a quick listen to the kick with and without the compressor to really hear what's been done to it. Okay, so this has clearly obliterated the kick, but we can really hear what the compression is doing and what's taking place. It's essentially flattened out and killed the transient. And what we do now is ease off on all these settings. We're going to increase the attack so we can start to let it breathe a bit and reduce the release for the same reason, and then change the ratio so it starts to sound more pleasing and less aggressive. And then you adjust the threshold to getting between minus three and minus six dB reduction, but no more. Make sure it's nice and loud when you're doing this so you can really hear the compressor working. We'll start by adjusting the attack and then just increasing it to let it breathe a bit. Okay, so it started to come through really quite nicely here, possibly a bit too much if anything, so I'm just going to roll it back off a little bit to help control it a little bit more, and we're going to add punch later with makeup gain. Just going to bring it back to about 20 milliseconds. Okay, so 26 sounds quite good. It's still letting some of it through, but it's still going to sound quite punchy. Next is the release, and you can actually just time that to the tempo of the song. As these are all just quarter notes, you could do it quite consistently. So you can just time the needle to each kick hit. Okay, so it's around 240 milliseconds or so. This would also change with the level of the threshold, so it would be worth coming back to later too. Of course, this won't apply to everything. So let's continue to reduce it to just where it sounds nice and doesn't sound unnatural. Okay, so it's around here where it's hanging on to the kick just long enough that it's still compressing it, but it's not so quick that you get pumping and it doesn't sound unnatural. You would use this method for a more consistent sound like synths, vocals, or guitar, but you tend to time the release with more rhythmic elements of the song, such as drums and percussion, and it can work quite nicely on bass too. Now, let's adjust the ratio. I'm looking for a slightly smoother sound for this type of kick, so let's start to reduce it and have a listen. For a kick, this is actually really quite a low ratio. I normally start on about four to one, as that is good for most kicks, but it still sounds a bit too aggressive for this. So I've gone with a three to one, as anything higher sounded too aggressive, and anything less sounded too gentle. For the knee, you would want to set that depending on the sound. For a kick, I always use a hard knee. But again, for some more gentle sounds, a softer knee would work for them. Let's just take a listen as I change it, and you'll really hear what it does. It's taking away a lot of the punch that I want because it's starting to compress that transient before it starts hitting that threshold. Whereas if this were applied on, again, a synth, vocal or guitar, it could sound really good. But as I said, it's taking away the punch that I want for this kick, so I'll leave it as a hard knee. Lastly, let's bring the threshold up so we get between 3 and 6 dB of reduction. 
This will be different for different sounds because sometimes one dB is actually enough to let something cut through the mix, but I want this to sound really punchy, so I'm going to go quite high on the reduction. Okay, so it's on about 4.5 here. Then we're going to apply that much makeup gain to it as well, so our kick will be at the same level as it was before the compression. However, because we have a slightly longer attack, it's letting some of that transient through. I'm probably just going to drop it down a little bit because that initial transient will be very loud then. Now let's A and B the sound so we can hear it with and without the compressor to really hear what the compressor's done to our kick. and now it's sounding really, really punchy. Next, we would want to blend this back into our mix and probably adjust it in context with everything. This is a really great method to practice how you actually apply compression and will definitely help to improve your mixes. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching, cheers.